very mysterious passage. And Jacob left Beersheba and he set out for Haran. And he came upon a certain place and stopped there for the night, for the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place, and he dreamed. And look, a ramp was set against the ground with its top reaching the heavens. And look, messengers of God were going up and coming down it. And look, the Lord was poised over him. And he said, I am the Lord, uh, I am the God, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. That, it's that first utterance of this kind of patriarchal lineage. This is precisely what Jacob is going to participate in. The land on which you lie, to you I will give it to you and your seed. And your seed shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall burst forth to the west and to the east and the north and the south. And all of the clans of the earth shall be blessed through you and through your seed. I'll just stop there. This is that Abrahamic blessing. This is what he's participating in. This is precisely what Isaac has, has blessed him with as well as he goes on. Now God kind of backs this up. And notice the land here, right? To see them. And when he says messengers, obviously, these are these angelic messengers going up and down this ramp. This is a divine place. Isaac's eyes, I think, are being opened. And now it's, this is the first time God is speaking to Jacob here. And look, here's that line again. I am with you. Important. And I will guard you wherever you go. Important. And I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken to you. <laughs> so look at these things. I will, I am with you. Again, that repetition that we see in, uh, uh, in Genesis, that we see in Exodus, that we see in Joshua. It's part of the, almost that divine name, right? I, I am with you and will guard you, which this is going to come up again in the Jacob and Esau story whenever it's time for the brothers to meet. And Esau shows up with 400 men and Jacob's having to kind of break up his camp. Kind of, he's having to, how to put it, he's having to make strategic decisions. Like if he attacks one, then the other one can get away. Now, but notice what the promise is here. I will guard you. All right. So here's the promise to him. It's part of the Abrahamic blessing. And this is important because I want to show you what comes up here almost immediately. And Jacob awoke from his sleep and he said, Indeed, the Lord is in this place and I did not know. There's this great revelation for him, this vision that he's had. The Lord is in this place and I did not know. And he was afraid. And he said, How fearsome is this place? This can be but the house of God. And this is the gate of the heavens. These divine messengers back and forth. He now actually knows this. This truly is God. This truly is this divine place. All right. Setting this up because the, what happens next is, is really odd. And Jacob, odd, but maybe kind of what we expect of Jacob. Jacob, I'll say this. Jacob is one of those characters who you can actually see a transformation inside of his narrative itself. So, and, and this is kind of what I'm trying to highlight here for us in, in looking at these blessings that he's been given. And Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone he had put at his head and he set it as a pillar and poured oil over its top. And he called the name of the place Bethel, though the name of the town before had been loose. And Jacob made a vow, a vow saying, pay attention to this vow that he makes. And this is after he has the vision. This is after God speaks to him, gives him the blessing. Here's his vow. If the Lord God be with me. <laughs> I hope you love the conditional. It's his first line. If the Lord God be with me and guard me on this way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, and I return safely to my father's house. And we know in the narrative what's coming whenever he has to go return to his father's house. We know it. Because Esau told us, when the time comes for the mourning of my father, I'll kill him. So if God does all of this, guards me, and I return safely to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God. 